Measuring your exercise intensity. To get the most of your exercise routine, you must exercise at a moderate intensity. We will review a few methods to help you measure the intensity of the exercise you do at home. Your heart rate is a good indicator of how hard you're working. You will need to know what your normal resting heart rate is for you to know by how much it is increasing with your exercise. Generally, an exercise performed at a moderate intensity should increase your heart rate by 20 to 30 or even 40 beats per minute. You can find your pulse on the inside of your wrist just below the thumb. You need to count how many beats you feel in 10 seconds and multiply that number by 6 to get your beats per minute. The rating of perceived exertion scale is very easy to use with a variety of activity. Simply ask yourself how you find your effort while doing the activity. It's important to rate a global effort, not only parts of your body that you feel are struggling doing the activity. A zero out of 10 would indicate very low effort is needed and a 10 out of 10 would indicate maximal effort that could only be sustained for maybe 10 to 30 seconds. We will see the scale on the last slide. The talk test is a way for you to check if you can talk in short sentences all within one breath. And finally, you can also use a heart rate monitor to watch or a watch to measure your heart rate response to the activity you are doing. Here is a table to help you understand how to use the talk test to measure your exercise intensity. Light exercise intensity means you are breathing normally, you can sing or talk. For example, slow walking, stretching and light housework are light intensity activities. Moderate exercise intensity means your breathing is getting faster. You can carry a conversation, but you cannot sing. Example of activities would be brisk walking, leisurely swimming, or cycling. Vigorous exercise intensity means you are gasping for breath. You can't carry a conversation. Example of activities done at that level would be jogging, soccer, or even fast dancing. Here are some general tips for safe exercise. If you have a rescue inhaler prescribed to you, you need to carry it with you and take it as needed. If you are normally using supplemental oxygen at home, you also need to use it while you are exercising. Don't exercise if you're experiencing a worsening of your usual symptoms or when the air quality is poor. If you have nitro spray prescribed to you, you need to know how and when to use it, and you should have it with you at all times. If you have angina symptoms, you should stop your activity and rest for a few minutes to see if your symptoms go away. If still present, you then need to use your nitro as prescribed to you. If you have diabetes and take medication to control your blood sugar or glucose, you should monitor your glucose level prior to starting your exercise to ensure it is adequate. Exercising will use your glucose for your muscles and it can drop too low. You should monitor your glucose level and for any symptoms of hypoglycemia. Carry a source of sugar with you in case your glucose gets too low. Here is a table comparing the rating of perceived exertion scale and your heart rate. Here we assume that the resting heart rate is around 60 beats per minute. Moderate intensity exercise should increase the heart rate by 20, 30 or 40 beats per minute. So somewhere between 80 90 or 100 beats per minute would be expected for this person. Here's an easy visual reference for the rating of perceived exertion scale. 
moderate intensity effort falls somewhere between 3 and 5 out of 10. 3 out of 10 indicates moderate intensity that is comfortable to do for a sustained period of time. 4 out of 10 indicate that the effort is getting somewhat hard. And 5 out of 10 indicates that the effort is getting difficult. This is only indicated if you are feeling great and you're trying to push yourself a little bit.